right. Hey, guys, we are welcoming you today, and I've got my friend, my colleague, uh, somebody I admire, respect, Amy Wienens from Cedar Valley, Iowa, the heartland of the United States of America. I love uh, being with Amy. She jacks me up. She makes me happy. Uh, she's born and raised in Cedar Valley. She's um, got a background in real estate running back to, I believe, 1993. Is that right, Amy? Yeah. <laughs> so she's been with uh, Century 21, um, and then she started her own company, I think about 2013, and she ran that company into uh, probably the most productive per agent company in her market, doing about seven, 800 deals, just under 1,000. She has a tremendous office, uh, just a tremendous leader. I know you're going to feel her energy when you talk to her. So Amy... It's changing. Real estate is changing. <laughs> it's ever evolving, isn't it? It is, but I'm, I'm just the market, the market changing. And, and, you know, we've been through so many changes since we've been in real estate. What do you just talk real estate now? What are you telling your team how to handle this change? Well, I think that this team is a, or this time of uh, in the market is actually an exciting time. Like I'm actually happy that we're adjusting, right? Because we're entering into a more of a normal market. And I think that people have not had to necessarily use a lot of skill in the past few years. It's been more of an order taker. And I think their true value actually is going to show up uh, in a big way in this market. And I think that um, for the agent that'll, that'll put the time in, that'll, that'll actually have a human connection and not just be transactional, they're going to kill it in this next few years. So we're not seeing near as many multiple offers, but we're still seeing some. Yeah. Sometimes people are still getting to have their inspections in place. Sometimes they're not. So I feel like for like buyer's agents out there, like it's got to start to feel good to them. Like, okay, it's not so crazy. Although with certain houses, it still is. Yeah. Well, you know what? Good houses sell in any market, don't they? That's true. <laughs> That's true. That's true. So let's talk about you're at the top of your game. You know, I've always said um, people that are at the top of their game just push harder when everyone else has had enough. And uh, what made you just keep on going? I mean, I've always said real estate could be, it could be a part-time pastime. A lot of people get their license and you kind of never hear from them again. They may sell a house every 10 years or so. It's a part-time pastime. It can be a job. That's one level. Then it can be actually a career. That's a little bit higher level. Or you can push it into a business. And uh, I mean, what's your thoughts on that as far as how many people actually push it to the limit? I, so I come from a background where I think that if you're going to get to do anything, you're going to do it 120%. So when I got into this business, I obviously got in it as an agent, a solo agent in a company. And then I started to, you know, after several years, every year I was like, I, I don't believe in going backwards. So every year the treadmill, the incline of the treadmill just kept getting steeper and steeper and steeper. Right. And then it comes to like, okay, I do want a life also. So then you have to start to leverage some things. And so yes. I think that you have mind shifts where I need to leverage now. And I'm 51 years old and I have small children. I got started on the late start plan. Um, anyway, so I just think that, that in today's market, I always believe in moving forward. You're either growing and moving forward or you're shrinking and dying. So I want to push the limits on everything. Great. I agree 100%. You know, I Marty, you, my... you, Marty, you inspire me because here's the thing. There are a lot of people that would say, you've had a fabulous career. You've accomplished what you needed to accomplish. You're at an age where your husband's already retired. He's, he, you've got a big boat. You want to spend the week in the mountains. Like you have all this. And guess what? I don't hear one thought of retirement come out of your mouth. There's no talk of it, which is great because I don't even believe in that concept. I think it seems so boring. Um, or just like you're constantly like, let's move the needle forward. You're thinking now generationally, you're like, how can I impact generations? And I think that just having vision um, to think this is bigger than me gets you up every day and keeps you going after things. Yeah, it really does. You know, one of the reasons I moved to EXP, and you're right, I could have rocked on. I had, uh, of course, owned a REMAX franchise for 20 plus years. I, I did a lot of good things with them. They gave me a lot of trophies. By the way, I have a whole room full. I do uh, too, I, actually. I, I have boxes. <laughs> we have boxes. But you know, the, the real trophy I'm really proud of that, that I was able to do, I was able to build my mother a home. 
a 5,000 square foot home, moved her out of 1,200 square feet in the mountains of North Carolina and, and build her a, a home. And there she and my stepfather spent the last 11, 12 years of their life. So those are my trophies. Those are the things I was able to do as a single parent. I was able to send my kids to college. I did a lot. I sent them to Europe. I never been, you know, I'd never been to Europe. I, I stayed here and worked. They went to Europe. I don't know how that works out. But, the, but anyway, the point of it was those were my trophies, and I did really good. I was able to, to buy a building. I, I was okay. But, but here's the thing. I couldn't stop because there was so much more to do. There's so much, I, you, you never get enough. You're not good enough. You can always do better. You can always do better. And another thing about real estate that, that made me come to this company, honestly, is I like to run with the big dogs. You know, I like to run with the group that's doing something. And I saw some of these teams, and you mentioned that too before we joined DXP, that you had seen some of the top national teams and what they had done and said, man, if they're looking at this, they're doing the 1,000, 2,000 transactions a year. I better look at this. And, of course, I saw the industry moving towards the Internet. And I said, you remember what Mike Ferry used to say, uh, Amy? He said, uh, real estate is an antiquated, out-of-date <laughs> business that's the slowest thing in the world to change. <laughs> yeah, And he's right. So yeah. why do you think why do you think change is so much harder in this business than maybe in other businesses? I don't know. I think that people get in their head too much and they complicate things and they don't have confidence in is this is how we've always done it. I think that's just a real mentality. Well, it's always been done this way. And when you can shelf that, like it's always been done this way and look at other people, I think it's a lack of exposure for a lot. When you're exposed to some, like you're in the rooms that where you get to, that we're fortunate to get to sit in, Marty. We get to sit in some of the largest rooms, right? Yes, we do. So you get you get exposed to it, and then your mind just starts to go. Like once your mind is exposed to the possibilities, it's hard to rein it back in. So a lot of times, I think it's just people get in this like this work life mode. They're just doing their thing and taking their kids to t ball and doing their thing and playing golf and doing their thing. And they're just not exposed to the life that they possibly could have. And I think that when you get exposed, then, you know, you start to go, what is out there? And obviously the last couple of years have told us that we don't need brick and mortar, although I have a great brick and mortar building, right? Yes, you do. We don't, we don't need those things necessarily. And we can develop, we have community and conversation and collaboration. Really, really great. Just like this. It is good. You know, one of the things I read recently that, that rang so true to me in real estate, you know, people get in their office and they make friends with the people that are in their office. And that's all good. We, we all do that. We all like the people that we work with. But um, on, on the subject of why change is so hard, I read a quote that I really liked. It said, it takes a great deal of courage to stand up to your enemies, but even more to stand up to your friends. <laughs> <laughs> that I is really nice. like that one. You know, when everybody you've got is kind of pulling you down, it's like the uh, the old story about the crabs that are going up the yeah, wall and down. somebody's <laughs> pulling them down, this, that, and the other. I don't think that they mean to. It's just a, a pattern. It's, it, to me, it's a negative pattern that you get into. So addressing change, how do you tell your agents to, you know, master change, to, to get more comfortable with it? I think just having the knowledge of it, like knowledge is power. The more knowledge you have, the more confident you're going to feel having the conversations, right? So mm -hmm. I think you have to have, have the knowledge. I'm also a big believer in you have to present well, like look sharp, feel sharp, right? So I, I think that. Um, and then I think just taking it out of a transaction and taking the focus off a commission check. Because if you chase money, I've always said this to my team, if you chase money, money's going to run. If you pursue the client's needs, if you do your best to um, serve and meet their needs, you're, you're going to have an abundance of it. It's not going to be your issue. And so no matter what shifting market is out there, I love it. Um, in 2008, when the market was shifting and all of that, I really took an approach to things that I was not going to participate in it. Like I was going to be the news and the news was going to be positive and the news was going to be that we are moving forward. And people today, especially, I feel like they need so much hope. Like, so go be their hope. Go be there. Like I always say, hook onto my hope. Go do that. Um, well, we've got you. I don't think there's enough that could be said. I always compare our industry and some somebody probably in the medical field would think this is arrogant. But when you're a specialist, 
when you're excellent at what you do, I compare you to us, you know, any kind of a medical specialist, right? If you go to them and they have uncertainty, eh, that doesn't yeah. like, uh, no, thank you. You want someone who's confident. You want someone who's saying, I got you. I got this. We've got this, don't you? So yes. I think when you're navigating times, obviously, if people are in the market to buy because of their own needs, right? There's no, I mean, it's all the, the good time to buy or sell is when you need to buy or sell and what's good for you. But if you can just step into the relationship part of it, instead of a transaction on looking for a commission, people hate salespeople. I don't like salespeople, but I love a great salesperson. Amen. I will go for that. Let me just relate that to shopping for clothes, if I might. Oh, when you right. walk into a wonderful department store and you're looking around and the salesperson just almost leaps on you the second you, you walk in there and say, can I help you? You know, you say, oh, I'm just looking. I'm just looking. But if they'll wait a little bit and actually kind of see what you're looking for and get a little bit of your vibe before they step up to you, you're going to receive them a whole lot better. And the same thing is about real estate. So um, I, I found an interesting statistic, Amy. Only 4% of the people that get into real estate get into it as their primary career and last it a lifetime. Only 4%. Wow. So we got a high burnout factor. Yeah, we do. And that's, again, like when I was looking at EXP, and I don't mean to keep taking it back to this, but when I was looking at EXP and I was looking at the future of my company, and I have a fabulous team. Like my agents are top notch. And they're amazing human beings. So not are they great agents, but they're great, great people. When I was looking at them, I'm looking at their future. And I know the opportunities I have as the owner. And I go to, to, to bed with a lot of risk and a lot of responsibility that they don't have. But I have, a, I have more opportunity than they have too, because I take Bye. those risks, right? When I was looking at that, I'm like this, if people can get this in their mind, they have the exact same opportunity as I do. The, le the playing field is level and that feels good to me that I can look them in the eye and say, you have the exact same opportunity to create growth, to create financial independence, to create a, a retirement plan, to create a team just like I do. And now, to me, that feels good. It does to me too. And that's one of the reasons that I moved to this. This is the reason I didn't go independent. This is because EXP gives my people the same opportunity as I did. And, you know, no matter, I mean, every company is built on the back of the person at the top makes more than the people at the bottom. And so when I listen to Glenn Sanford and his heart is to create a company that is good for agents, that gives them opportunity. I mean, he, he actually thrills me. He's not very dynamic, we must admit, but but he is just such a genuine person. He's not dynamic. He is so smart, though. He is so, so smart. Because he's awesome. But just think about this. When he's asked, like, who's what's the biggest threat to our industry? Zillow, Redfin, all that. So what's he doing? He goes and buys Zucasa. So he's, got, he's already implementing a plan. And I like forward thinkers like that. I like to be... I like to be connected. I always talk about whose belt string are you connected to? Who's your kite string connected to? What belt loop, right? I like to connect my belt, my kite string to that belt loop that they're thinking forward movement. They're growing like limitations are coming off and he's seeing it in a whole different thing. I mean, let's talk about the metaverse. That's All crazy. Right. I mean, that's a crazy thing, but we're seeing it. And I'm like, that's awesome. He's already got this all designed. You yes. can build teams across the world. And I just think that that's, um, I, I think too, Marty, when you hit a certain stage in your career that I've hit and that you've hit, not that, I mean, we always can grow and do more, but I've hit a point where I would, like, I've kind of climbed a mountain. I don't necessarily have personal real estate goals for myself. I have great, huge goals for my team, but I would like to just pour in and build. And so I think EXP, the, the part that really attracted me is everyone has, it's a level playing field for all. And if you're a builder, it's limitless. Mm, you're right. If you're an influencer, it's incredible. So uh, just a few people are out there. See, I believe real estate is, I get into Americanism when I think about it because it's, uh, I believe it is small business. I believe real estate is small business. I believe small business is the backbone of the American economy. So I believe very strongly in strong, strong business. And, and I kind of look at Zillow and some of those players, big tech and big money, 
as people, I mean, business is business. They're trying to put us out of business. We're trying to stay in business. We're trying to get bigger. They're going there. And, and I almost think of EXP, this is going to sound weird, but you have to remember I'm from a blue collar family. I think of it like a union of agents <laughs> against the big guys. <laughs> And we're in business here. We actually own this company with Glenn Sanford, which is amazing. There's, yes. there's never been a leader that I've looked at in the last almost 40 years of looking at real estate that gave us a chance of, hey, you can own a part of this company. You can have as big a chunk as you can carve out. Marty, here's the thing, too. Like, when I'm looking around, obviously, the last few years have been pivot, 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 right? That's all we seem to be doing. Pivot, pivot. And a shifting world, a changing world. And it's been such a comfort to me personally to look at top people across the country who will jump on a call with you at any time. Mm -hmm. This is how I do it. Let's yeah. collaborate on this. Oh, let me send you a script for this. Let me send you that. Like there's for people to open up their playbook. Again, this is the big difference in real estate is that, you know, and, and I've been guilty of it. Like in my market, like I hold, I might go to a national conference and talk about things. I go to this market. And I'm like, oh, keep everything close to your chest. And now I'm like flipping the script on it. What do you want to know? How can I help you? Let's go. And I yeah. think that just flipping the script on that, it takes time in your mind to adjust. But yes. when you do, it's like everything you see, it's like, oh, everything's abundant. It's bigger. It's bigger. You know, when you, um, I used to tell my agents, my agents used to get, you know, when I'd hire a new agent, everybody thought, oh my goodness, they're going to take some of my business. And I'm thinking, no, you don't understand. We take a big part, bigger part of the pie. When the pie gets bigger, the bigger we get. And that's what's happening with EXP right now across the nation and around the world. So I'm excited about that. So, um, I, I think EXP is uh, literally like an arrow shot into like scarcity, that whole scarcity mentality, which has been wrought through our industry. It's one of the most competitive cutthroat industries across the country. And I feel like it's like literally like flipping everything like that. Yep. That's the, we're in a new season and that's not how we're going to survive. We need each other. Right. And that, that's one thing I have to say, probably the millennials brought to the, the table when business, they, they are all about teams, this, that, and the other. Uh, the former generation, all about ego. I mean, the one at the top, the name on the door, that kind of thing. So this is really something that's uh, I, taken control of me. I mean, I'm thrilled to be working with the class of agents that I'm working with. Uh, so that's been really big for me. So you can't stay in your comfort zone and actually um, do anything big. Here's the thing, Marty. I've been waking up with this feeling like people need to know the opportunity that's there. Like I have like this, they need to know it. They can just go, oh, it's EXP, whatever. I mean, I just had contact with someone who reached out to me four years ago. And I was like, I was so close-minded and I consider myself to be an open-minded person about business. Right. I was super turned off again because I was closed-minded. This is how real estate is done. <laughs> I kicked myself. I mean, look how, I mean, I could have created so much in the last four years, right? But I watched it. I watched it. And about two years ago, I started thinking, did I miss the boat? <laughs> did I miss the boat? And then about a year ago, I got really like, I got to pursue. We, the, the real estate industry as a whole is so changing. There's so many different pillars of opportunity being created. We cannot miss out on this. Even though we're in small town, Iowa, we cannot miss this opportunity. And so I went out on an exploration hunt, right? And I called you. I'm like, why did you just do this? I mean, you've been number one in the world. You've been number one in the, in the United States with Remax. That's a big deal. Like, why did you make the shift? But that just brought so much confidence to me. Like, you're smart, Marty, right? And when I look at these people, I'm like, they're the best of the best. And they're doing this. And the greatest thing about it is so many of them, they're creating such impact in their communities. They're mm -hmm. taking what they're doing and they're like, let's look at like Brent Grove, Grove and, and all that he does to create. It's amazing. It, it is and how amazing. he gives back and he contributes. And I just, well, I just love that. Yeah, me too. And I want to do more. I want to give more. I want to give more back to this industry that's been so good to me. There's no way right. where I came from that I should have grown up and, and owned a real estate company and, and done some of the things that I've been able to do. It's been fortunate and it's been because of real estate. But you know what? One of the first emotions that I had when I um, found out about EXP and as I really got to understand it, I was mad. 
Mad that you passed on it a few years ago? No, I didn't. I didn't. Well, maybe pass on it. I was mad I didn't have this opportunity when I was in real estate. You know, when I got in real estate, this opportunity, well, there wasn't anything like it. And, and honestly, you know, REMAX is my background. That For the professional agent, for the agent who's really in it as a business, uh, that was a good decision because that was that's what we had to choose from. But I didn't have this opportunity. So what more? And another thing that really got me, well, two more things that really got me, but one of them was the health care. I know it's a simple thing. It's but huge. As a it's, sing- it's huge. <laughs> as a single parent raising three kids, you know how many times I worried about health care? I didn't have health care. It was a huge day for me to be able to buy health care about probably about six, seven, eight years ago for my team. I bought it for my team and I paid, I think, 50 percent. By the way, I still pay that same amount. When we moved to EXP, I still pay 50 percent. Their rates went down (laughs) because I, I, I kept the same overhead. So it was a simple thing. Somebody could have done it before now, but they just didn't think enough about the agent. It was all about the money going to the top, going to the top, going to the group at the top, going to the person at the top. And uh, and then also, you know, I worked for a, a national company that went on the stock exchange. I but didn't even any stock. I just had a conversation with one of my agents today. She goes, "Oh, I just got some badge. Like she's been like invest every time that she has a closing, she's investing, right? Um, is it? It's a ten percent, a ten percent discount. You get to invest five percent of your commission check. Correct. So five percent of every check at a ten percent discount. And people keep saying, well, why is EXP stock down? Well, it's all down. Everything's down, right? But that's the time to be doing it. Like I would be sidelining it, be pouring into it, right? That's there's where you're gonna get, you pick up your big wins. And so I, I'm thrilled when she told me I've been investing in every closing, and we have multiple agents doing that. I'm like, to me, that's a win. It's huge. It's huge for their future. It's huge for their life. And what is the what's the comment? A rising tide raises all boats. Yeah. Like, you know, there used to be a saying in real estate that uh, nobody ever retired from real estate. You know, they just kept on working. (laughs) And then a really sad thing is that still, most people retire from real estate dead broke. And that's the reason they keep on working. So we got a question here. What makes a great salesperson? How do you know when you found one? Oh, good question. I think you'd be a good human being, don't you? Yeah. Connectability. The ability to connect with a, a human being, I think is your not, like we can train skill. But who are you as a person? Are you a, do you have a good heart, so to speak? And can you connect with another human being? If you could connect with a human being, we can train you to be a great real estate agent. Yeah. You agree, Marty? I agree. I agree. Just don't, when the, when your eyes open, don't, don't have dollar signs in them. Don't do that. <laughs> and you know what? No, as long as it takes, you can do it if you won't quit. Quitters never win. You know, that's just the way it is. So anyway, did you, next question, did you see that Open Door got fined for 62 million? Yeah, that's nice. nice. Yeah, that's nice. (laughs) I'm sorry. (laughs) I'm like, oh. Oh, gee. Oh, that's too bad. bad. You have to take us out. I'm sorry. Listen, let me tell you something. I don't understand why people, and and we, we do it. We do some sales. We do some guaranteed sales. We've also got, um, you know, with, with EXP, we have a, a sale, a company, investor company. I've never really understood the draw, except that they just want to do it so quickly. Maybe they just have no patience, or maybe they really don't understand that they're giving money away, their hard-earned equity. I never really got the draw for Open Door. You know, we don't really have Open Door. Open Door is not in our market, but we do have a, a program that we do offer that to sellers if that's like their, you know, I always look at, okay, what's your, what's your need? Is it, what's your motivation? Is it time or money? Is it, what, mm-hmm. what is it? And for some people, it's not money-based at all. Mm-hmm. So for those people that it's all time and ease and convenience, we do offer a program that's just a cash buyout. We can close it in three weeks, four weeks, whatever they want to do. Yeah, we, we offer that too. We offer um, a flip and fix uh, if, yeah. if they need a little bit of, so we offer all those things, but th- that was a big one. And one of the things in that lawsuit was that they were telling people 
that they were getting top dollar. At least when I do an investor sale, I say, no, we can get more on the open market. But if you want to go fast, we, we've got this option as well. We actually always sign, we actually always have our people sign, like, here's what the actual, we're going to pay you this, but this is what your number could be on the market. I yeah. want some kind of written acknowledgement that I've told you you're leaving 20 or 30 or 40 grand on the table. That's awesome. All we have is integrity. All we have is our name. So we can't get a reputation for not, oh, they're just doing these side dirty deals to these, you know, naive people. No, that's not it. You sign. I've told you your market's here. You want this option? This is, there's the difference. Are you cool with that? Mm hmm. That's the truth. That's a great way to do it. I love that disclosure. So um, tell me um, what you think going forward. Um, for agents that want to look deeper into EXP? What do you think they should do? Well, I think they should obviously reach out to, to us, right? Because mm -hmm. um, everybody, I mean, it's, it's just like real estate is not one size fits all. Everybody's right. needs are so different. Maybe some people are in a brokerage and they're like, I don't really know that I see a lot of value from it. And I would love the opportunity to create other pillars of income. I mean, that's what I keep thinking. That's why that I'm shocked that everybody's not there. It's three. I mean, there's three pillars of, of, of opportunity to create income. And I think, I don't know who would miss out on that. Like, why would you continue to miss out on it? So obviously reach out to us um, and then get, here's the great thing. And you did this with me. You connect with me with people that were in my similar situation, my similar size, my similar transaction volume, so that I could actually communicate and figure out how does this actually work for us? And I think, again, like we have the ability because we've got great teams all over the country and great people, partners all over the country. They're happy to sit down and say, break it down to you individually. What mm -hmm. does it mean for you personally? That's pretty cool. Um, you know, Tina just went to a thousand. Did you see that announcement? I'm yesterday? so proud of her. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's amazing. Yeah, I'm that proud That is of her. absolutely amazing. Virtually at 41, 42 years old, she's got that going on. I mean, that is a huge, huge thing. If you've had a chance to hear her talk, she talks about she was trying to figure out, you know, at some point in time, you've sold enough real estate, you've worked hard enough, uh, you start looking for additional income. And so she was she was looking at uh, buying a mobile home park. Have you ever heard her say that? <laughs> and she, listen, that's not that's not a very glamorous way to move forward. No, and I mean, I, I look at people that they're, they're like getting all their, you know, they'll go buy rental properties and buildings and all that kind of stuff. That that might be a long-term play. It doesn't have near the power that this does. This is like, I tell people, EXP is like a Ferrari. You could either take it for a real drive or you can drive it through like a retirement village yeah. at 20 miles an hour. Like you That's can right. be at whatever pace you want to be at, but you yeah. have the opportunity to sit in a Ferrari and explore it and go to places you've never gone. Yeah. And we got two more questions and I want to answer those. But before I go into answering them, I, I want to say one thing. If you work here five years, you compare that five years or 10 years working somewhere else, somewhere else where you're working right now, the next five or 10 years, if you're here, it lands very different. You've got very different assets Absolutely. at the end of that year. So you've got to at least understand that. So here's the questions that we've got. And um, they're two good questions, but I want to tell you something before I ask you these questions. We get on a Zoom call every single Monday with every single Monday at one o'clock with agents across this nation that is uh, held by Kyle Whistle. And Kyle goes over how to create business. So one of the first questions that we have here is she says, as a newer agent, what uh, activities should you do to get listings and business? Well, I think obviously hopping on those calls, right? Um, right. And I, I think we're back to the basics in this market all over the place. I think it is um, getting involved in something that you care about, that's some kind of a board that you care about, be showing some community involvement. Then I think it's obviously, we always say it's a, it's a, it's a human contact sport. Go knock on doors, go meet people. I tell my team all the time, go, go put your badge on, go walk around like you got a purpose. People yeah, are going to ask you about real estate, Starbucks, Panera, whatever. People always want to know about real estate. It's the, they ask about it all the time. They care about it. Become the expert. So I think you can quickly do that. And if you've got a good attitude and you walk with good energy, good purpose, people are attracted to people that they think are successful. And perception is reality. So even taking to social media, which is something that I'm 
you know, I'm not great at necessarily at all. Um, but there's a lot of our newer agents, again, they can seem super busy all the time and think, and they're like doing everything. And that might not actually be the case, but it doesn't matter because perception is reality and they're right. getting business off of it. So I think that you just have to kind of put yourself out there, do some social media stuff, put some posts out there when you're closing on a house or, and tell a story with that. I mean, we've found that the, our best responses to things, our agents in our market there said, man, I, I, we wrote 14 offers before we got an accepted offer. This young family, we got them in right before their baby, their first child was getting ready to be born. Things like that, like pull on the heartstrings. They're, they're true. They're not salesy. People respond to it. Oh, I think so too. But another thing I would tell this newer agent is if you get on a call, there is so much training in this company. A ton of training. I mean, and more than you can, you can stand, <laughs> more than yeah, you can actually participate in. Um, if you get on some of these calls and learn which of these people that you want to be coached by, because people that are coached uh, have a better outcome, folks. I mean, that's just the way it is. So I love that. So the second question is, how do you fit into the new construction industry as a new agent? Go sell one of them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, you kind of have to get your foot in the door. It, it takes a while to build a relationship with builders. That's not a... I don't think that's a necessarily a, it's relationship. We're in a relationship business. And the good news is if people like to hide behind text messages and emails, even if you take your phone and send a quick video, man, I just showed your house. You guys do a fabulous job. I love your processes. I'm hoping I can sell one of your homes soon. Like just setting yourself apart differently from other agents out there. I mean, obviously most of communication is visual, right? Yet we hang out in text messages and emails and think we're going to be a standout. So I think obviously getting in there, selling it actually, I mean, we told our agents, go walk through neighborhoods. They're not our listings. Go walk right. through neighborhoods and just start showcasing them. Like, Hey, what? here you go. This is the stage of development in this. This is under construction here. When they start to act like they own the project, when they don't, they're still going to get the people coming to them. It's genius. Yes, yes it is genius. And I think that, um, you know, one of the a good story that I heard about this is let's say take a small builder, a small builder that doesn't have, you know, like a big national builder that has on site people there. So a small builder was out there and, and he had basically, he watched uh, another friend of his who was also a small builder who had hired an agent and that agent. And I think there was a team there that went there. It was a, a husband and wife team. They went out there every single Sunday they had their open house. They put up their balloons. They got there early. They had some energy. They put something into it. And by seeing that, he chose to hire them. So you get hired by your work ethic and how you show out. I mean, basically, you're, you're on showcase every single day in this business. Everywhere you go, everything you do, you're, you're a walking billboard. It's either drawing people to you or chasing them away. That's it. And that's true. It's like... Um, uh, what you were talking about, the desperation, I, I thought about when you're in the water sometime with a child and a child maybe has a, a float on there and they'll try to get it and the, they go towards it and it pushes it away. Yeah. They push it away. So you can't absolutely go towards the money. That's the reason you have to look at a broader scope and pick, uh, pick the relationship and be the person, be the professional, be, be the person that knows the answer. Be the person be that... The <laughs> that's it. So... I don't know what to say about you, Amy, except that you're anything but uh, ordinary. You are a just a wildfire. And I just uh, thank you so much for being here. I hope people will tune in to your podcast. Tell them when that. Yeah, them yeah but you that. are more podcast. You are more. It's on all the platforms. Um, I'm putting stuff out there pretty consistently. And uh, we start season four here in a few weeks. So you are more. And it's, it's not real estate related, but it affects real estate right? It's, yeah. it's all what you have going on in your head. It is. It is totally. And I know one thing, when my head is in the wrong place, all I got to do is call Amy Wienens <laughs> and man, my head gets, those things get whipped out of my mind and uh, I get better in a Thank better you, place. Rachel. So Thank you, I, I appreciate you. Thank you so much for all you're doing you. and I'll see you soon. All right. Sounds great. Thank all you right. all. Take care. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.